In architecture school, I once fought with my teacher. It was a debate over my design. He said that my design did not fit into the context, that it did not speak of the place where it was from. And I basically said, so what? I believe that is what Henry Ford would have said if he was ever confronted about his city. Ford Motors is one of the most famous companies in the world. Literally, go out of your house and you'll be able to spot some Fords moving around. This company has made a lot of money over the years. And that is all thanks to the brilliant mind of Henry Ford. Henry understood his clients. He understood his business. But most of all, he understood his workers. Known for treating his workers quite well, he gave them excellent wages, kept their working conditions quite well and offered them various privileges. It is ironical that a person who understands people so well made a series of blunders that were born out of his inability to understand people. Today on Blessed Dark's 5 Minutes, we are talking about possibly the biggest mistake that Henry Ford made. His dream project, his utopia, a project that was doomed before it even began. We are talking about the city of Fordlandia. In the late 1920s, the Ford Motor Company bought millions of acres of land in Brazil. The plan was to make a city unlike any other. Or maybe like many others you would have probably seen. You will get this by the end of the video. Basically, this video is about how Henry Ford was a loving, warm-hearted person who made a city for the people of Brazil out of the goodness of his heart. Bazinga. Let's take a look as to why Henry Ford wanted to make a city in the Amazon. In the early 1900s, a few decades before Ford set on to build Fordlandia, a huge shift took place in the rubber industry. Historically, Brazil had been the world's main supplier of rubber. This suddenly changed because of one man, Henry Wickham. Henry stole thousands of rubber plant seeds and sold them to various buyers in the rest of Europe and their colonies, namely Malaysia, Sri Lanka and Indonesia. As the seeds thrived in warm environment, Rubber plantations started coming up in these areas and soon Brazil lost its grip over the rubber market. Now let's come back to Henry Ford. Why did he care about rubber that was grown half a world away? By the 1920s, Ford controlled most of the raw materials that went into his car and thus their prices were always kept in check. Because of the European dominance over rubber, they could set any price they wanted, thus inflating the price of his cars. Since rubber could not be grown in the US, Henry Ford bought land in Brazil to make his very own plantation. But his vision was not limited to a plantation. He wanted to build an entire city, a utopia for the people of Brazil. And so it started. Ford sent supplies, American managers and hired a Brazilian workforce. He had bought the land for the city which would be named Fordlandia. And now the work needed to begin, so the workers started to clear the land. Turns out clearing the land in the Amazon is not that easy. The workers started getting attacked by ants, hornets, scorpions and deadly pit wipers. What the hell are deadly pit wipers? Oh. Eventually the workers managed to clear the land and to build a town in the middle of a rainforest. Because when in history have wealthy upper classes pause their plans for humanitarian reasons. I feel like I should say damn. Do it. Damn! Now, the major problem with this town was its owner. Henry had grown up on a farm and he wanted the town to feel like the small midwestern town where he was from. And that was the problem. You see, this town was built for white farmers, not for Brazilian workers. After the town was made, the plantations were laid in the style of the colonial ones in Southeast Asia. And that was problem number three. You see, in Southeast Asia, the plantations were laid very densely. This saved space and increased the output of the plantations. But Ford forgot one thing. This town was in the freaking Amazon. With ants, scorpions, hornets and since I've seen them, I've started to have nightmares. Deadly freaking pit wipers. In Brazil, this density ended up creating an environment where the native bugs that fed on rubber trees thrived. Basically, Ford built a giant bug incubator. So, the town is out of place. There are deadly pit wipers everywhere and rubber plantations are getting destroyed. And Henry quickly realized that this is not going to work. So, he cut his losses and lived happily ever after. How I wish that were true. Henry Ford was not willing to back down. 
He made more investments, grew the town and employed more and more workers. Speaking of workers, let's talk about their life in the town of Fordlandia. Now modernism and industrial revolution gave birth to a lot of things. Mass housing buildings, brilliant architects, beautiful products. But they also gave rise to a new way of living. The 9 to 5. For close to a century now, people have been working from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and that is exactly the time that was used for the workers in Fordlandia. But the people of Brazil did not work at these timings. Due to intense heat during the daytime, they were used to working early morning, then taking a break and resuming work in the evening. But Ford made them work according to the timings of his American workers. Another thing was that Ford gave them really good wages. That is a good thing, right? Well, yes, but if you live in the Amazon, there is nothing around to buy. In other terms, the money he gave them was pretty useless to them. The problems of this town were manifold. All of them arising because the person who planned this town had no knowledge of the area, cultural context or the lifestyle of the people. He came with his ideas and started imposing them onto others. Henry Ford had never taken a sip of alcohol in his life, so alcohol was banned in Fordlandia. Henry Ford was a vegetarian, so meat was banned in Fordlandia. There were so many cultural differences that Henry Ford refused to understand or confront, which also led to many riots and revolts. Henry kept working on this project till the day he retired. For 25 years, he constantly tried to make Fordlandia work. When his son took over the company, the first thing he did was shut down the town and sell the land for a huge loss. What's actually funny in all of this is that Henry Ford never set a foot in Fordlandia. He controlled the whole town miles away sitting in his office. And with that, looks like our time is up. Fordlandia became a ghost town, a ruin, a living memory of why it is always important, especially for architects, to understand the climate, the context, the landscape, and most of all, the people for whom they're building. If you like the story of Fordlandia, let me know in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up and please share this video. Do subscribe to Blessed Dark for more such videos. I will see you guys next week with another video. Until then, you could follow Blessed Dark on Instagram for daily architect facts. That is it. Bye-bye.